Glory. Hallelujah. How's everybody today? Well, man, you sure look a lot better, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Like I always say, there shouldn't be one straight Christian. Everybody should be drunk. You know, I've had some people, I, I've, I've always wondered why. I said, man, why don't you come back to service? Now your services are too long. <laughs> it's because you don't love Jesus. <laughs> oh, you proclaim to be a lover of Jesus, but you can't even get in a breakthrough to get into his presence. Did you get God's attention today? Oh, hallelujah. You know, why we were praying in the Spirit, uh, the Lord showed me everyone as a candle, and he said, I'm trimming everybody's wick today. And, and I saw the oil coming in from each side and rolling up, coming into us. And after he trimmed the wick, we became brighter and brighter. And he said, tell them to be prepared because I'm coming. I'm coming. And I'm coming through the body before I personally, physically come. I'm coming through my body. That's why I left my body here. I'm coming. Things are about to change tremendously. There's going to be quick transitions. Things that will take longer process, but there will be quicker ones. Listen, you cannot believe what you see. Amen. You cannot believe what you hear. Don't believe the media, whatever you do. There's so many things that are going on behind closed doors that people have no understanding about. That there's about to be exposed. And they are exploding places. There's underground tunnels being blown up. There's all kinds of things. The big fight. Remember, this is an end time event. Amen? It's end time. That means it's coming to an end. Things are going to come to an end for something to begin new. You can never start something new until you end something, right? And it's the same thing with you and I and everything we're doing. Everything comes to an end and then so that there's a new beginning. You know, who we <laughs> Hallelujah. One of the areas that, you know, people are fear and angry and frustrated and all kinds of things. These are all emotional things, you know. We are, as the moment we came into this realm, memory had to be created. Because our memory from where we came from was removed. The only thing that we know is that we came from the presence of God and that desire with an unknown memory was there. <laughs> so the desire to, there was, but we didn't know, we couldn't remember where we came from. But that desire for feeling good was there because we came from the greatest presence ever will be. We came from the feel-good presence. We came from the glorious presence of God. But we didn't have a memory of it. So when we came into this realm, memories had to be created. And however your original or origin of memories were created, it has affected us all the way through life. Some of us that were brought up abused, some of us that brought up rejected, some of the brought up, however we were brought up, those memories were burned there. And then we began to create our own memories besides the events of others, individuals. See, we live a life of memory. We wouldn't know how to do certain things if we didn't remember. Amen? We wouldn't know how to speak if we didn't know how to speak. Or remember how to speak. <laughs> and as we began to learn a language, it became automatic. Amen? But I really believe babies have their own language until you can't interpret them. But it's amazing how they can talk to one another, you know? A goo 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 gaga. See, they had tongues in their own language. We had to wait until get baptized in the Holy Ghost. 
But the only thing that they knew about was what was good for them. That's what a child's about. Why? Because they're looking to fulfill that desire from where they came from. Me, 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 me. And as we became more mature, those memories that were in our life, we began to realize that there were certain memories that were destructive and certain memories that were healthy. And in these memories, we had to begin, in fact, before BC, before I became a Christian, I mean, it wasn't even just about being a Christian because I never even knew what a Christian was. After being born in the Spirit of God, one of the things that was revealed to me was the exchange of memories and that God was going to create new memories so that because my old memories were destructive. And until we come to that understanding, it affects everything. It affects your attitude, your motive, even your diet. It affects everything. Until we're willing to realize and separate what memories are destructive and what memories are healthy. And so many times we're putting up with destructive memories and not taking, removing them. And we're just willing to live with them. And then these memories that have emotional attachments to them are always affecting us. And, and in this, the Spirit is saying, listen, I'm bringing my body through deliverance. And you're going to either cooperate and change with me or you're going to be the same. Because that's what's happening right now. God, remember the Lord says, I'm coming through my body. Well, he isn't going to come through sinful life. He's not going to come through a miserable life. He's going to come through a blameless vessel. Righteous, holy, and sanctified. Nothing else. Amen? There's two words that are vital. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Let's go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Hallelujah. Divine correction. There's two words that are vital for me and you. Forgiveness and forget. Two vital words. Forgiveness and forget. Because you cannot move on without forgiveness. And you can't move on without forgetting your past. Amen? Again, you've heard my testimony multiple times. When the Lord said to me, God, you want to get off of drugs and alcohol? You don't want a new life. And I realized without a new life, that meant I had to forget everything of my life. I had to walk away from my life if I wanted to be free. That was a choice. See, you and I every single day are still walking away from our old life. It's not just erased. It's our responsibility to erase it. God gives me and you the tools and the weapons to erase everything of our old life. So that we can be set free from all the entanglements and affairs of this world. We're not relying on our abilities, our talents, our bank accounts, our successes, or our failures. Amen? We're not allowing anything of guilt or condemnation. Because all of these things are in the past. What I should have done, how I should have done it, and why didn't I do it. Too bad, it's over with. Learn from it and move on. Amen? Gosh, I could have helped this person and I didn't. Well, you didn't, so what? Go on. Repent and move. See, without forgiveness, that's why the Lord says, if you don't forgive, I can't forgive you. Why? What is he saying? Forgive the things of your past. Because sins are not always present. After you've sinned, you committed a sin or transgression, it's now become a what? Past. Everything is moving. 
So when you've committed an act of transgression or sin, it's now the past. That's what the enemy grabs hold of. He can't grab hold of anything from the future, only from your past. And then he uses it against you. In first, uh, or first, yeah. In Psalm 103. Let's read it together. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is with me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits or forget all his promises. Don't forget them. In other words, he's saying bring these and keep them present with you all the time. Put them before you. Who forgives all your iniquities. Hello. Who heals all your diseases. <laughs> I mean, come on. This is insurance. This is Medicaid from heaven. Only you don't have these money-hungry doctors. He forgives your iniquities. He forgives your past, your sins. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed. Yes, I love that part. Like what? The eagles. Amen. I had a full, I, I watched the movie this morning right out my window. I was telling my wife, I was so excited. I was laying on my, this beamer that we have, and I was looking out the window. I'm like, man, there's two, two uh, hawks, and they were cruising over the pond in the back. And I saw something flapping in the water. So obviously whatever was in the water noticed was being hunted. Then the two hawks, man, they looked like eagles. I mean, they were white-headed and so forth. And the, and the one, they were both going to go after it, and then the, the one decided to sway off, and the other one went down and, and just hovered over it, just hovered over it and watched. And you can see whatever was in the water was flapping. And then he went and grabbed it, and he took it out, and he backstroked. All, he couldn't get it out of the water. It was too big. So he backstroked like this. All the way, I mean, he was in the middle of this pond, all the way to the shore. He got it up on the shore and beat it to death and ate it. I thought that was exciting. I, I was like, Lord, that's so awesome in how you set the whole cycle of life, you know? I mean, I don't know what it was. I couldn't tell if it was a snake. I didn't think it was a duck or anything because it was under, it was in the water. I thought maybe it was a fish or something, you know. But all the other duckies and swans were all over there. And, but I just thought it was so unique. And I'm like, Lord, this is so cool. I get a movie in the morning. You know, I didn't have no popcorn or nothing. I was just, just me and the Lord. And he was just showing me this cycle of life. And I'm thinking, wow. And he, and he reminded me that we are eagles. You know what? We are hunters of evil. And don't even realize it. See, so many times we've been living a life allowing evil to hunt us. Now you should be a hunter of evil. Amen? Oh, happy days. So he says, don't forget his benefits, which is healing, deliverance, a rescued life, youth. Praise God. Don't forget. In other words, these are to be placed into your memory. Does everybody get it? These benefits are to be placed into your memory. And they're not to be behind you. They're to be in front of you all the time. The memories of God are to be before us. Why? Because that's what frees me and you. His promises and covenant. In 2 Corinthians 10, memories of destruction. Hallelujah. In verse 4. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. Carnal. Physical. Old man-like. But they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? 
a memory lie. Mm. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought. How, listen, it's a thought of memory. Yes. Into captivity to the obedience of Christ or the mind of Christ, the thoughts of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Hey, we are in a spiritual warfare against memories of destruction. This is warfare. It is a spiritual warfare that's affecting your physical life in this realm. And if people are not going to take authority in that realm and start separating destructive memories and healthy memories, they're unstable. It brings instability. See, psychiatrists can't do that. Why? Because there's only one thing that can separate those things, and that's the Word of God, the mind of Christ. You can try to train someone how to do certain things, but it can only last so long. It's called management. Freedom only comes from the one that created me and you and from his words and from his presence and from his life. That's it. And we want a life of freedom, not management. Amen? Again, spiritual warfare against memories of destruction. That's where we're fighting in every area. In Romans 12. I mean, this is something that we've not heard before. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. So does he know what your memories are? Yes, he does. Do you think he's the one that placed those memories there? Yes, he did. <laughs> He's the one that did the whole circumstance so that memory could be burned. Oh, hallelujah. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Let's speak it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. So he's warning us, don't go back to the ways of thinking of the world. But be transformed by the run. Renewing of your mind. <laughs> transformed by the removing <laughs> or shutting down of destructive memories. Amen. The renewing of your mind that you may approve what is that good and that acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, transform by re bringing the word of God into you. And removing and shutting down destructive memories. And living from the future, not the past, but allowing the Holy Spirit to create new memory. Create new memory. Listen, even after you've been saved, you can be saved 40 years. It doesn't matter. You still have burned memories of your past. But until those memories are covered with truth, they'll still be active. It's our responsibility to activate new memories and deactivate old ones. That's our responsibility. Amen? What does the word say? That we're a new creation in Christ. Old things pass away. All things become new. That takes cooperation, doesn't it? And what a new creation in Christ is new way of thinking. New attitude. No, new motives. New way of life. Brand new. No longer the old. No longer looking back, going back, or touching back. Going forward. Why? Because you're going to forget and forgive. You're going to what? Forget and forgive. Matthew 13. Hallelujah. Matthew 13, 18.
And so we should be doing our enemy, beating them to death. But don't eat them, all right? <laughs> you know, even David said, I pursue my enemy until they're destroyed. That's the problem. People are not pursuing those destructive memories. Well, I don't want to go there. You better go there and get rid of it. Again, you can't go to the medical field because they're just going to medicate you. And it, and it doesn't work anyways. In fact, the side effect is usually suicide. They just create a new memory. I'm going to kill myself. And then I put dependence. Oh, no, I need a doctor. I need this. I need, no. I need that medication. I can't tell you how many people refuse to come off the mental medication and they won't come into the discipleship. You know, it's not a program. It's a deprogram. You got to get deprogrammed from the ways of the world. <laughs> I'm just not ready for a program. No, you're just not ready to get deprogrammed. Verse 18. Let's speak it. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When someone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. Wow. Now listen. This word understand is also does not remember it. Does everybody get it? You will not remember something you don't understand. Amen? But you will remember something you do understand. So when anyone hears the word of God and doesn't understand it, they're not going to remember it. Then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received the seed. What's the seed? The word. On the wayside. But he who received the seed on the stony places, this one he hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises, because of the word immediately he what stumbles. Or when there's any attack, emotional attack, instead of grabbing hold of what God says, they grab hold of what their past is. Then they manifest. Is everybody okay? It brings them in a state to react instead of respond. Now he received among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Why are the cares of the world? Because the memories of the world. The emotions of the world. Not willing to walk away from the world. But he who receives seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands or what? Remembers it. Who indeed bears fruit and reduces some, uh, produces some a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. Remember, to understand is to remember. You do not remember something you don't understand or haven't experienced. You don't remember it. Amen? So the enemy comes to try to steal your new memory. That's his job. He's trying to compromise your new memory. He's trying to diminish your new memories. He's trying to connect you to your, oh, or he's trying to disqualify your new memories by the things of your past with blame, guilt, or shame, or condemnation, or unforgiveness, or bitterness, or anger, things to those degree. Philippians 3. Why is the Spirit talking about this? Because he wants to remind us in how essential it is right now. Because the enemy lurks everywhere right now to steal, kill, and destroy like he's never done before. And why? Because he knows his time is up. Philippians 3 verse 12. One of the things the enemy loves to do is set you up. <laughs> the word says that he sets traps for you. Why? To activate an old memory. Did you ever all of a sudden you're at peace with something and all of a sudden it comes across your path and again it goes, Oh man! That's the enemy just set you up. You bit the bait and he told you, you need to go do something. 
You need to go find this out. You need to go see this. You need to go here or go over there. Whatever it is. You need to go. Look at he's trying to trap you. That's where you got to ask yourself, Lord, am I supposed to do this? See, if you acknowledge the Lord, you're protected. God will never send you in a trap. He'll send you out to kick butt, though. Amen. But he won't send you in a trap. But the enemy will trap you. He'll set you up. Why? To disqualify a new memory and magnify an old one. Amen. Everybody okay? Philippians 3.12. Let's speak it. <clears throat> That's not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I do what? I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Jesus Christ has also laid hold of me. In other words, in that relationship. How many of y'all know that your memories can affect your relationship with the Lord? Amen. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, what? Forgetting, there's that word, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press forward toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, as many as are mature or understand this, or put to remember, have this in our memory or in our mind. If in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the what? Same mind. Same thought pattern. Brethren, join in following my example. And note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame. Who set their mind on what? Earthly things. They set their memory on the worldly things again. For our citizenship is in heaven, for which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Awesome. Forgetting those things that are harmful, emotional, destructive memories. Amen. People wanted to, uh, uh, you know, everybody knows that emotional pain is the worst. When something happens in an individual's life, whether it's in marriage, friendship, business, work, whatever it may be, emotional effect is the worst. Sometimes people rather break a leg, know that it's going to heal. <laughs> but in this, we've got to understand that there is such an emotional pain that can be relieved instantly by exchanging it. And it's not about how you feel. See, people are still being dictated by how they feel. Once you've said something and put it into a decree, it's over with. Lord, I decree in Jesus' name, I take that memory of destruction and I exchange it. Now, whatever it's associated with, you exchange it for what is righteousness of him. Lord, I exchange all my sicknesses and disease for your stripes and healings. I exchange my aging for your youth. Hallelujah. I'm still waiting for more hair. Hello. You exchange it because we live a life of exchange. But you must believe it. You must receive it. And you do that by thank you. And you hold on to it. It's yours. Amen. Amen. God's promises are yes and amen, not could be or maybe. Oh, hallelujah. Colossians 3. Does it take practice? Yes. You know, it's really easy to correct everyone when you know that they're in that state. Just tell them who told you that. Who told you that? Who told you that? And where did it come from? I told me that. You told you that you're an idiot? You told yourself that you're no good? You told yourself that you're not worthy? 
You told yourself that you're an addict? You did, huh? Would God tell you that? No. Would the enemy tell you that? Yes. Would your old man tell you that? Yes. God wouldn't tell you that. Hallelujah. Verse 1. Colossians 3, 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts, set your memories on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You know, that the, we've died. We're supposed to be dead and now we're hidden in him. See, if you're hidden in him, nothing from your old can go in there. Nothing. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life, who is our life, our new life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your me members or your what? Memories. Put to death your what? Memories. Does everybody get it? Everyone say memories. Now he's not saying put to death your good memories, is he? No, he's putting to death your destructive memories. Now, here's some of them, which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. He's saying, put to death to these things. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, whether you proclaim to be a Christian or not. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them, but now... You yourselves are to put off these, all these are which are anger. Is that associated with memory? Amen. You know, you had to learn anger. Wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Don't lie to one another since you've put off the old man in all of his memories with his deeds and put on the new man with new memories. Renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Why? Because the knowledge of God is the word of God, which is bringing me and you new memories. Amen? And these are tools of substance to create new memories. So everything that you and I do should be paralleled with the word of God. Is this what the word says? Is this what you say, spirit? Amen? Am I being led by the spirit? Or are I still being led by the emotion? Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. Are these new? Yeah. This is the new life. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, throw it in the garbage. Don't go to the phone. Go to the throne. Well, I got something to say to you. Yeah, well, keep it to yourself. Until you get the national grand force out of your own eye, then you can tell somebody else. Hallelujah. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above all these, put on what? Love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be what? Thankful. Now, here's the kicker. Are you ready for the next verse? Let the word of Christ, the what? The word of Christ dwell in you occasionally, richly. This is the problem. People don't allow the word of Christ to dwell in them richly. That means alive, activated. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all what? Wisdom. What does wisdom do? Tells you what to do. What does understanding do? Tells you how to do it. Teaching and admonishing one another in sounds and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in the heart's in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Again, 
put to death all destructive memories of people, places, and things, events, angers, everything else, failures, everything that you've messed up on. Amen? Get rid of it. And put, putting on a new memory. You know, I always look at it as a cookie jar. So there's a cookie jar, right? Just be your mind. Your mind is a cookie jar. Now, you stick your hand in the cookie jar, you make sure you don't take any stale cookies out. Because if you eat them, it's going to affect you. You want a fresh, crisp, nice cookie. Wonderfully tasting. Amen? It's the same thing. Destructive memories are stale. Amen? New memories are crisp and crunchy. You know, and what does it do? You want another one afterwards. But you don't want another one that's stale. Amen? Just remember, look at everybody's head as a cookie jar. <laughs> Hallelujah. Putting your hand in the memory jar of cookies. <laughs> Now listen, it's your choice to accept or reject. Amen? So when you pull that memory out, you look at it. Man, it's a stale one. <laughs> Amen? Or they, well, I'm going to eat that one. Why? Because what you eat is what you become. Hebrew 4. Oh, happy days. Hebrew chapter 4. <laughs> People going to go around everybody, you cookie head. That's where Jarhead came from. They got that mixed up. It was supposed to be a, a Marine, but. Hallelujah. What did I say to go Hebrews 4? Hebrew 4, verse 11. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is what? Living. It's living. It's living. It's crisp. Fresh. Living and powerful. Tasteful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of the soul, soul satisfying, and spirit, and the joints and marrow. And it is the discerner of the thoughts or memories and the desires of the heart. Hello. And there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. The word of God the Word of God is a book of remembrance. Somebody get it? It's a book of remembrance. It's a book of God's memories for me and you to exchange our memories for His. All of our destructive memories for healthy memories. Malachi 3. All right, 16. Are you ready? Sure is hot in here, isn't it? Whew. Then those, verse 16, who feared the Lord, spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of what? Remembrance was written before him. For those who fear the Lord... And who meditates on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. And on, a, on the day that I make them my jewels, I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous 
and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve God. Now you got to remember one of the things that the enemy tries to do is use these destructive memories so an individual becomes a servant of self and not a servant of the Lord. Amen. Book of Remembrance, Life of Memories. You know, we, we have a life of memories, man, that we want to just get rid of. All rejection, harmful, even unexplainable. We're to have places of delightful memories, joyful. But it's our choice to activate our memories. You activate them and reject or reject them. Once activation is established, it releases a desire or an emotion. That's why when so many things are, you can go into a store or something, all of a sudden you hear music from your past, it tries to activate something from your past. Amen? See, people have a tendency to go to them to see what can be activated, and they don't even know. They're, the enemy is trapping them to go to back to the music because once the music is established, possession is established. Access. Amen? People are still listening to secular music when they shouldn't be at all. What it's doing, it's creating old, it's activating old memories, which is bringing old emotions and opening the door to old demons. They're not establishing a new creation. They're promoting the old creation. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verse 16. You know, sometimes, even in our abilities and jobs, sometimes God isn't asking her to go back to that same way of working. Why? Because he knows it's gonna, you're going to have struggles because it's going to constantly activate old memories. Sometimes he's saying, let that job go. I got a better one for you. But see, some people can't let go. They have a hard time letting go of the old man because they're still trusting in the old man, not God. Even though they say, oh, I trust the Lord and let go. I can't. Now, Jesus challenged the, the wealthy man. When the wealthy man came up to him and said, yo... I give money, I do this, I do that. I'm, I'm blameless. I'm, and Jesus said, well, cool, sell everything you got. Come on, follow me. Dude said, oh, no, I can't do that. See, Jesus knows exactly what's still holding us. He still knows. And he's trying to cut us loose from everything of our past so we can move forward. Some of us have not grown in years because of things that are still holding us from the past. Still the same old thing, repeating itself. Same old thing. Why? Not discerning destructive memories and healthy memories. And there's that vicious cycle, isn't it? Verse 16. Isaiah 43, 16. Thus is the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the what? The former things. Nor consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Rivers is associated with refreshing. See, these are refreshing memories. Does everybody understand that? Don't remember memories of destruction. Allow God to do a new thing in you. Exchange them out. Psalm 63.
Oh, happy days. Psalm 63. I guess maybe that's the blessing of getting older. You can't remember as much. You might need a name tag occasionally, you know. <laughs> it's amazing you can't remember all the other things, but those thinking memories will still come up. You know, I can't tell you how much of a hard time I have in remembering all this music. I don't. I might get partial lead to it. What was that Holy Spirit? And then when it comes, it goes. Oh man, there it goes. What was that song, Lord? I gotta grab it and tell somebody right away before it loses. It, it disintegrates in my hand. Hallelujah. Psalm 63, verse 6. It'd be easier if they're all in a cookie jar. Verse 6, let's speak it. When I remember you on my bed, who's it remembering? The Lord. I meditate on you in the night watches because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for the jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. When I remember my creator and the savior and the love of my life. And all the promises and his covenant and his words. I can hold on to the path of peace, joy, and righteousness. Amen. The word says if you set your mind on God, you will always have peace. Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10, verse 6. Let's be, blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the righteous is what? Blessed. But it goes back to blessings are on the head of the righteous, or actually blessings are in the head of the righteous. Amen? The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart will receive commands, but the pratting fool will fall. He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. Again, the memory of the righteous is blessed. It's blessed. That means your memory will be favored. The things that you remember of God will be favored. Why? Because they go before you. Anything of God supersedes anything. Supersedes it all. Supersedes every sickness, disease, everything supersedes it, if we allow it, if we believe it. How many of you know all things are going to work to the good no matter what? Even when you blow it and make a mistake, it's going to work to the good if you believe it and receive it, if you repent it and you forgive, if you forget those things and move on, if you live from the future instead of the past and quit living in how you feel. I can't tell me how many people tell me that's all they do is tell me how they feel. Shut up. Stick your feelings in the garbage. It's not about a feeling. I never heard Jesus tell anybody how he felt. Not one place in that Bible. I feel like I never seen it anywhere. He was led. In fact, it says he didn't open his mouth, even when they were cursing him and all kinds of stuff. He didn't respond. The only thing he said, I come to do the will of my father. 
Amen? Verse 12. Philippians 2.12. Let's speak it. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Well, how is it going to be fear and trembling without remembrance of the things of God? It's called reverence. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without what? complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world holding fast the word of life changer so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Again, work out your memories of righteousness and remove memories of destruction, holding fast to the word of life with new memories. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter three. In verse one. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but to as carnal as babes in Christ. Carnal carnality is still living out of the memories of the old man. That's what's being carnal. That's why many people, well, I've been a Christian 30 years, and why are you still carnal? Because you're still living out of the memories of the old man instead of the new memories of what Christ says you are. See, there really is no identity there. When you're really in that place as a new creation, you have a new identity. You maintain that identity maintaining the promises of God. And exchanging the old memories for new ones. Every day God's trying to create a new memory in you. And his goodness and what he's done. All of your trials and tribulations is for him to get the glory. And when he does it, that's a new memory burn. Wow, yeah, the Lord did this for me. I remember that. And he did it for me this time. And over this time. And, this, and he did that for me. And, and again, these are all new memories. Because he's getting the glory. But it gives you something to grab hold of. Amen? It gives you something to grab hold of. Those memories are the, the healthy ones are to grab hold of. Which brings you encouragement. Knowing that if he did it then, he can do it again. Because he doesn't change. Amen? We're the ones that change. How do we change? By accepting an old memory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 2, he says, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you're not able to receive it. And even now, you're still not able. For you're still carnal, living out of the old man's memories. For where there are envy, strife, and division among you, are you not carnal and behaving like what? Men, if you're behaving like men, are you behaving like the old man? Yes. Other than that, you're behaving like Christ. Remember, carnality is living out of the old man's memories. So when you start to react, hello, that's not the new man. That's the old man. Romans 8. Recognizing these things is vital. Even after you make the mistake. Amen? Amen? Romans 8, 12.
Remember, you always got to cho choke, react until respond comes up. Romans 8, verse 12. So that you don't do the things that you want to do. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh or carnal, you're going to what? In other words, if you live according to the old memories, are you going to live or die? You're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, 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 there it says if, it means cooperation required. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together with him. Hello. Living out of the old memories, <laughs> desires, and emotions will prevent growth and advancement into maturity. And I'm going to close at 1 Corinthians 2. Destructive memories. You know, Paul explained this. He says, you know, I do the things I don't want to do and the things I want to do, I don't do. Amen? But as you continue to read more of his letters, then he finally got to the place where, yes, we have warfare in the memories. <laughs> But in the beginning, he was doing like, man, you know, I still do the things I don't want. But he never, because he didn't. He wasn't now teaching separation of destructive memories. He talked about the mind of Christ. Amen. But if you're not in, filled with the Spirit and connected, how are you going to know what the mind of Christ is? Amen. That's why being filled with the Spirit of God is essential. Being led by the Spirit of God means being led by the memories of God. Being met, led by the thoughts of God. It's not being led by emotion or feeling or desire. 1 Corinthians 2.13. Let's speak it. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with Spiritual. But the natural mind does not receive these things. The carnal mind does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things that he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind or the thoughts or the memories of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. In other words, we have the memories of God. We have the memories of this world. This, is a, this Bible is a book of memories. That's why it's essential to know. Amen? Look, at there's a process in training in these. There's a conversion. There's a converting of the soul. And the converting of the soul is a process of separating the old memories with new ones. Amen? Burying those old memories. Not allow them to activate. You have the power to choose to accept that memory and activate it or reject it and bury it. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal this word today as you prepare us for what's getting ready to happen. That we may stay in the memory and hold on to the things that you've promised that are true living from the future and not from the past. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen.